Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. According to industry insiders, it appears that Blue Origin has emerged as the only potential bidder for the United Launch Alliance contract. That is to say, ULA is about to be eliminated as a competitor in the spaceflight arena, replaced with a combined organization consisting of Blue Origin and ULA. Many industry experts are arguing that this is going to create a powerful new competitor for SpaceX that's really going to give Elon Musk a run for his money. But is that actually the case? What is Blue Origin actually going to get out of ULA besides eliminating one of their own competitors? And does this simply mean that the future of spaceflight is going to be left to the two wealthiest people on the planet and everybody else gets cut out? All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon and once again, welcome to the Angry Astronaut. I have a bulletin for you today that I've been trying to do for a while and there's always one thing after another uh, rearing its ugly head when it comes to exciting news in space flight. So it's just kept delaying this particular topic, but I think it's very important that we discuss it. There's been a whole lot of news recently, at least speculation, that blew origin is on the verge, on the precipice of making perhaps the biggest spaceflight acquisition of all time, gobbling up the multi-billion dollar behemoth that is United Launch Alliance. And there's been a lot of talk about what this means for the future of spaceflight, and just about everybody who writes about it discusses how this is going to present a new and challenging competitor in the market and that they'll be able to give SpaceX a run for their money, etc., etc. And I have to say, this has really been annoying me because I actually don't see it this way at all. Instead, what this purchase represents is the elimination of of a competitor, not the creation of new competition in the market, but rather completely wiping out one very valid competitor from all future spaceflight contracts, whether it be NASA, private, military, whatever. ULA, especially with the successful advent of the Vulcan Centaur, was a significant competitor in these future contracts and had billions of dollars in contracts already lined up, admittedly most of those through Amazon, but nevertheless had a bright future ahead of them, and now Blue Origin is looking to eliminate that competitor. Because when it comes right down to it, Blue Origin isn't going to gain a great deal by gobbling up ULA in terms of capacity, in terms of unique capabilities. Gobbling up ULA really doesn't add a great deal to what Blue Origin is going to have to offer here in the next several years. But what it does do is wipe out a competitor that represented a very significant threat to the future of Blue Origin, and it has reduced the future of at least competitive American spaceflight to the two richest people in the world, with everybody else being cut out of the deal. So how do we know that Blue Origin is about to purchase ULA? Well, it's been about a year since Ars Technica reported that ULA was up for sale in the first place and that they had three potential buyers, one of which was Blue Origin. In December, the Wall Street Journal confirmed that the competition was narrowing and that a private equity firm called Cerberus was another likely bidder, but that Blue Origin was the second. And since that time, a handful of senior officials Officials at ULA are now seeking new jobs, and Bezos recently sold $2.4 billion worth of Amazon stock, and in securities filings, disclosed that he could sell an additional $8 billion to $9 billion in stock over the next 12 months. 
Although there's no confirmed values, there's been speculation in the large launch industry that ULA may be sold for between two and three billion dollars, and this is no coincidence. Jeff Bezos is clearly setting himself up for a large purchase, and this is the only likely purchase sitting in front of him right now. Of course, nobody is making any official statements on this. ULA's current owners, including Boeing, are making no comment on on the upcoming sale, but it's very likely that this is going to be announced within the next month or two. But what exactly is Blue Origin going to get out of this deal? Well, to be frank, not a lot, because the new Glenn, which is now sitting on the launch pad and has gone through some cryo tests and is likely to make its first flight later this year unless things go wrong, has a 7 meter fairing as opposed to 5.4 meters for Vulcan Centaur and 45 tons worth of payload capability up to low Earth orbit as opposed to 27.2 metric tons for Vulcan Centaur with six solid rocket boosters. Where, however, ULA gets a big advantage is in the geosynchronous orbit category, because Vulcan Centaur drops from that 27.2 metric tons to 14.5 metric tons to GTO, whereas Blue Origin drops all the way down from 45 metric tons to 13.5 metric tons up to GTO. Why is that the case? Well, it's because New Glenn is so much heavier than Vulcan Centaur. It may be able to deliver a substantial amount of payload up to low Earth orbit, but once it gets up to that orbit, it runs out of the vast majority of the fuel that it has at its disposal and cannot deliver a great deal of payload a whole lot further than that. And that's why you have such a colossal drop off to GTO and an even bigger drop off probably to a direct geosynchronous orbit drop off, which by the way, Blue Origin doesn't advertise what their capabilities are to geosynchronous orbit, and ULA does. They advertise a 6.5 metric ton capability and an 11.5 metric ton capability all the way out to TLI. That means that Vulcan Centaur is capable of delivering two metric tons less all the way to the moon than Blue Origin can deliver to geosynchronous transfer orbit. And I'm almost positive that New Glenn cannot deliver the same amount of payload to the moon with its current capabilities. That being the case though, I can't imagine that Blue Origin is going to keep Vulcan Centaur and all of the manufacturing facilities, all of the expenses involved in keeping this rocket going just for those limited orbital advantages. Instead, what they want to do is wipe out a competitor who's capable of doing things that they can't, capable of delivering payloads directly to geosynchronous orbit or all the way out to the moon that New Glenn is incapable of delivering. That would be a rough thing for New Glenn to have to deal with, especially right out of the gate when it's starting to compete for contracts, and it will make New Glenn's success a whole lot easier if they don't have to compete with that rocket. Especially if you consider that Starship is capable of delivering far more payload, both in terms of mass and volume to low Earth orbit as well, which means that New Glenn comes in second best to just about every orbit you can think of. When it comes to a mega constellation machine, Starship is a far superior rocket to New Glenn, and when it comes to rockets that can deliver payloads directly to geosynchronous orbit or to the moon without refueling, Vulcan Centaur is the superior rocket. It's going to make New Glenn a very difficult choice for a lot of prospective buyers. Yeah, it's possible that New Glenn will come in less as far as price is concerned, but even if it does, Vulcan Centaur is going to be partially reusable as well in the near future. The smart reusability plan under ULA that will rescue the engines from the booster, which represents about 70% of the cost, that's going to drop down Vulcan Centaur's pricing pretty significantly 
significantly, even more than the $100 million per launch that it currently has, which, once again, is not all that bad when you compare it to the types of rockets that can compete against it, such as Falcon Heavy. The price is nearly the same, actually. The only way New Glenn can compete against Vulcan Centaur to the types of orbits that it excels at is if it adds a third stage, which is probably in the process of happening right now, but unlikely to meet a mature system for the next two or three years at least, which means for two or three years, Vulcan Centaur will have superior capabilities to New Glenn, to geosynchronous orbit, and to the moon two destinations where Blue Origin wants to absolutely dominate. And if they take ULA out of the equation, they absolutely will dominate. Starship will not be capable of delivering substantial payloads out to these destinations for a considerable amount of time simply because Starship's capabilities drop off tremendously once it passes low Earth orbit from 100 metric tons down to 25 metric tons when you get to GTO, a 75% drop off, and then when you get any further than that, the drop off is going to be utterly colossal, to where it probably won't be much different than New Glenn's capabilities, and New Glenn will be substantially less expensive, because we're only talking about seven engines instead of 33, a much smaller exclusion zone, all the things that make New Glenn inferior to Vulcan Centaur when we're talking about these higher orbits. The fact that it's just a much heavier rocket with no greater propulsion, well, those problems are magnified many times over with Starship. Without low Earth orbit refueling, Starship's payload capabilities out to geosynchronous orbit, a direct geosynchronous orbit drop-off, that is, not GTO, and especially lunar destinations, are going to be inferior to New Glenn and definitely inferior to Vulcan Centaur. If Vulcan Centaur is removed from the equation, that means New Glenn is going to be the only choice to geosynchronous orbit and to the moon. Yes, Falcon Heavy will be able to carry similar payloads out to these destinations, actually possibly even heavier payloads, but Falcon Heavy has a tiny fairing compared to New Glenn. So New Glenn will have a huge advantage when it comes to the variety of payloads it can carry out to these destinations compared to Falcon Heavy. The New Glenn's advantage is almost completely erased if Vulcan Centaur is another alternative. So here's the bottom line. Vulcan Centaur will add very little value to Blue Origin's suite of services, maybe a slightly superior capability out to geosynchronous orbit and out to the moon, but not worth the amount of money that it's going to take to continue manufacturing an entirely new rocket with its own manufacturing facilities, its own engineers, its own technicians. That's going to be way too expensive compared to the advantage that it brings. However, regardless of how superior Vulcan Centaur's capabilities out to geosynchronous orbit in the moon are, this is going to put future contracts in serious jeopardy for Blue Origin unless Vulcan Centaur can be taken out of the way, which is exactly what this buy accomplishes. And it gets even better than that for Blue Origin. ULA is also a very popular vendor when it comes to the U.S. military. The military has been doing business with ULA forever, and they are a preferred vendor when it comes to military contracts. And if they are removed from the equation, then the military no longer has that preferred vendor anymore. Instead, they will have no choice but to go with either SpaceX or with Blue Origin, and most military contracts want a direct drop-off in geosynchronous orbit. Not a GTO orbit, but rather a direct geosynchronous drop-off. And New Glenn will have the advantage when it comes to that particular orbit, 
if Vulcan Centaur is no longer a competitor. I mean, it's so damned obvious. There is so much of an advantage that Blue Origin is going to be able to gain if they get Vulcan Centaur out of the way, and so little that they're going to gain if they keep Vulcan Centaur in service under the Blue Origin banner. Now, when it comes to on-orbit refueling, that's one thing that ULA brings to the table that could be a big advantage to Blue Origin. Blue Origin is going to need that kind of refueling in order to make Blue Moon a successful HLS competitor. And ULA has been working on on-orbit refueling for a very long time, arguably longer than even SpaceX has been working on it. So in that particular respect, if we're talking about the Centaur upper stage being used as a refueling depot, well, they're not going to use the Centaur upper stage in particular, but they might use the technology on the New Glenn upper stage in order to build their own refueling depots in the future. That is probably the only significant technological advantage that ULA brings to the table. The main advantage that purchasing ULA brings to the table for Blue Origin, as I've said many times now, is simply by taking them out of competition. And of course, by removing ULA from competition and by discontinuing Vulcan Centaur, you're going to be throwing thousands and thousands of skilled laborers, technicians, engineers, all out of work. And that is a devastating blow to the competitive space flight industry, in my opinion. On top of that, until the Rocket Lab Neutron becomes a viable competitor, space flight in the United States is going to become a two-horse race between SpaceX and Blue Origin, between the two wealthiest people on the planet, with everybody else being cut out of the deal. That's not good for the military. That's not good for NASA. That's not good for anybody. It's as close to a monopoly as you can get without actually having a monopoly, of course. And God forbid that Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos get together for dinner one evening and decide to control their prices, decide to not compete that vigorously anymore, but instead make their respective companies as much money as possible. There was a time that the United States had effective antitrust laws in place to keep things like this from happening. There was a time when the FTC actually did something about mergers like this. And this is a case where the FTC needs to grow some teeth again and do something about this upcoming monopoly that's taking shape right now. It is not in anybody's benefit, least of all the employees of ULA, for this merger to take place. The only people it might benefit are the shareholders, of course, and Jeff Bezos himself. And as we have learned time and again throughout recent history, what benefits Jeff Bezos does not benefit NASA or spaceflight in general. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe. Also, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Thank you so much to all of my new Patreon members who joined in February. You guys are fantastic. That's what keeps this content coming. And get ready for some fantastic exclusive content coming to you folks along with early releases as usual. So until somebody shuts this ugly merger down, I urge all of you to stay angry about space.